Hey guys, Santa here, and today what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a review of Ubuntu 11.10. So let's get started. First off, this is also a test of of a screen recorder I mentioned earlier in my cell phone video. Uh, this is called screen let's see, Screencast-O-Matic. So other than that, let's get on with the review. First off, let's talk about the appearance. Nothing really much has changed in Ubuntu except for the fact that GNOME 2 is completely gone and Unity slash GNOME 3 takes its place. And the only downside to that is that half the themes are missing. You know, the here, let me show you. The system settings, appearance, uh, you know, these themes. The ones that change your, your, bars, your bars and everything else to black and white. In the high contrast, you can still customize your wallpapers and zoom them in and stuff. You can still do that, but other than that, customization of your backgrounds and everything else around it is really limited. And as well as appearance, we have a launcher slash dock here. This is more reminiscent to the Mac OS series of desktop of uh, docks except this this down here is Cairo dock so just ignore this um let's see what else is there to talk about in terms of appearance um let's see nothing else there is really nothing much else to talk about appearance other than that yeah, let's see. The appearance of Ubuntu, let's see. The login screen's pretty beautiful. Uh it's it's graphically enhanced, which is better than the 11.04, which I think is pretty cool, but then again, I think that shuts down. Yes, I am aware that just changed, just freaking ignore it. Um, let's see. More for appearance. The file system has not changed one little bit inside of Ubuntu, you see here it looks more reminiscent to Windows XP slash Windows 7 and Windows 7 part, here's the search bar and then here's everything else your hard drives and stuff like that appearance is good but could use more customization next let's I'm gonna talk about what this is targeted to now obviously Ubuntu from the start from its hardcore start has been targeting beginner Linux users for a long period of time and I say that with with great intensity because if you go and install Ubuntu through the through a live CD that was my phone just ignore that if you install Ubuntu through a live CD you'll notice that the partitioner is super freaking easy like you see pretend that this is your Windows partition and this is your Ubuntu installation partition basically you can drag a line in between the two increasing or decreasing your Windows partition or your Ubuntu partition it couldn't be any more simpler than that Let's see, and in term, more terms of simplicity, as you saw in system settings, as you see here, anything that you can possibly be possibly imagine for settings is under mainly one icon, like I just showed appearance, and then for screen, here is where you control the brightness, and if your screen locks after it comes back from sleep, or if your screen's dimmed. Um, and also, I believe this is also targeted toward Mac users. I believe that because just with the way this system now works, I believe it totally. Let's take, for example, Firefox. Now, be aware, Firefox in Ubuntu does not have the Firefox button. And even if you go under View and then Toolbars, Menu Bar is not here. So even if I minimized this like so it's minimized up here is where you control the program just like in Mac and if I opened up something else like uh, Ubuntu Software Center give it a second you can still control the program even from Ubuntu Software Center and I'll get back to this in a minute uh... What else? Uh, the the notifications up here on your navig on your notification bar does also look like Mac as well with the uh, Wi-Fi detector, Bluetooth. Here, if you enable Show Time in menu bar, and when you unplug your laptop from 
your power source, it'll actually give you a time limit or a percentage of how much battery is left instead of just looking at a straight vertical battery icon. Let's see. Ah, uh, nothing much else has changed. And now let's let's move on to the programs that come within Ubuntu. Now, let's see. The only major changes in programs that are in Ubuntu. Um, let's see. Under here, as you as you clearly see, there's a web camera button, and that basically takes you to cheese webcam, but you must install it like through the Ubuntu Software Center. You j you can't just press webcam and then a random program pops up. Uh, let's see. Other than that, Thunderbird's now in here and it's replacing Evolution Email. Thunderbird for me is a no-brainer when it comes to Ubuntu. I mean, come on, Firefox is already in here, so why not just throw Th Thunderbird in here? Wouldn't that make perfect sense? Jeez. And other than that, Liber Office replaces Open Office, which really pisses me off. Cause I like I like Open Office. I mean, the story behind Liber Office is that a bunch of guys from Oracle decided to break and branch off into their own little corporation, and that and they use the source code from Open Office, and that's where we have Liber Office. It's stupid, but you gotta find a way to make money now these days, so I guess it kind of works. Um, what else? Um, the speed of this operating system is notorious for being lightning fast. It is still lightning fast, except for the the shutdown time and the boot time. I say that because I've timed it and compared between 11.04 the, sp the shutdown and boot speed suck it's as bad as windows and I say that with all seriousness it's as bad as windows it boots like windows how slow it does and it shuts like windows how slow it does I mean when I used to shut it down it, it used to do it lightning fast but now it takes at least 20 seconds, the same thing with the boot speed. Uh, other than that, there really isn't much else to talk about. Oh yeah, the software center, let's go into that real quick. Now the software center, as you clearly see, is more reminiscent to the App Store on the program iTunes. And it's also reminiscent to the Android Marketplace on Android mobile phones. As you see here, there's a bunch of apps spread out. You still, there are still, there's this, eh, there is still a difference between paying for apps and free apps. There's still those two, which I think is stupid. Um, and then you have your separate different categories over here. And on top of here is where you get to install and reinstall programs. And then here's your history as well. I'm not going to go deeply into it. And as usual, you can go. Uh, the search bar and type in what you want. Oh, one more thing about programs. They removed the Samtic, what, what is it? Simpit, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Samtic Package Manager. I have no idea why. For in favor of the Ubuntu Software Center, which I think is stupid because you need your repositories, people. And the Samtic Package Manager is where you get your repositories. It's stupid. Yeah. And another thing to mention is when you increase and decrease the volume using shortcut keys on your keyboard, it, make, it makes a little uh, popping sound like it does on Mac. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to end this video because I know for a fact that I will repeat myself. So, I give Ubuntu an 8 out of 10. One for lack of custom optimization and two because uh, it boots like windows and shuts down like windows in terms of speed so yeah I'll see you guys later bye bye